Today is Sunday, the 1st of September, and we're fishing Sean Beach. How you doing people? Back out again. Back out on the bike. I have a half star on the car again. So yeah, I'm currently down East Worthing. I'm just gonna head my way all over to Shore Marm by the distance there. Um, so now I'm gonna try and target some garfish. Got a couple of um, techniques I haven't tried before, which I want to give a go. Um, not too sure if they've been done, but that's my plan anyway. Got about five miles to cycle. So yeah, it's gonna be a long cycle, but once I get there, I'll show you how I'm gonna fish. Um, hopefully you find some garfish today. Just coming through by water now. Let's see the start of it here. It's crazy um, how different a week makes with the temperature. It's dropped probably seven or eight degrees and the beaches are empty. Definitely, um, more people fishing than our people on the beach, so I guess that's a good sign. Um, heading all down to shore because it's deeper water. Um, it can be a bit clearer towards the arm as well. Um, there's a bit of chop in the water as well, so it's not crystal clear compared to last week. But it should still be fishable for garfish, I'm hoping. But hopefully it won't be too much longer until I get down there. I thought I'd just stop off while I stopped off last time. To see how busy the beaches were are compared to a week ago. Look at that empty. A few people in the distance, but the arm section doesn't look too bad. Let's get back on the bike and head down there. Just coming up to the bowers now, that's where I want to turn off. Just admiring the nice houses. One day I would love to live along there, but a bit out of my price range. Oh, lovely, huge houses. Um, it's called the bowers up here. This is uh, the second roundabout along. The actual road it's on is called the bowers, so people refer to it as the bowers when they go fishing. Um, just going to cut off, off here and head down to the beach. Right guys, finally here. Water's looking really nice. Still quite clear. Um, after about 10 yards out, it looks quite a bit clearer. Lots of people fishing either side of me. Managed to sneak down in between them all. Um, yeah, once I set up, I'll show you how I'm going to fish. So, this is my first rig today using a float. And I'm going to use a bait feeder. I just Got some secret mix I'm going to go a bit in there, so you can see that. Okay guys, this is going to be my gar mix. Just some good old Scottish soaks there, so I'm just going to pour a good dollop of that in. Like so. And I've got some good old fish oil. Uh, I've got a fish sauce, I think. Not too sure what it translates to, but it's really fishy. It's good for Thai food and stuff. It's been sitting in the cupboard for a while. So I'm literally just going to pour in loads of this to give it some fishy scent. I'm just going to stick with it on. Give it a good old shake. 
and then that should hopefully go in the bait feeder nice and well and give lots of scent, nice cloudy fishy scent. Like I said, I've never tried this before, but let's give it a go. And basically I'm just using a little belly flap of the mackerel, using little size 4 Aberdeen hooks because I like feeding them up a shank a bit. And you've got the white silver of the belly of the mackerel just flapping around in the water. For a stop knot, I've literally just done a little loop on the line and just stuck a bit of tube in there. And then when the float runs up line, the bead puts, pushes up to the little stop knot there, it won't go any further. Still got my beach custom reel on there from the other day from Mac Fishing. It's got a 60 pound shock feeder on it, so it's not ideal, but then it's quite good for the like, running line on the float. I'm just going to whack it out as far as I can once I've got the mix in there. Here we can find some garfish. Okay, the wind's really starting to pick up a bit now. It wasn't really forecast to pick up this much. But this is what I'm doing for my second technique. What I've got is the bait fish I was using from last week when I caught those bass. And I put on some um, sort of silk thread, it's from a kite. And if theory is garfish, don't actually need hook to get hooked and their teeth get mangled up in all this thread and they're coming that way and easier to unhook as well but I kept the treble on the back and literally just hooked it on through the treble made a little loop so just in case any fish do turn up like mackerel or bass there's still a chance of hooking them and I've added the thread just to the garfish so I'm going to be casting that whilst the other uh, rods out there on the float got my little makeshift tripod there for the float rod. Current's going from east to west. The wind's really picked up lies. Bit of a bummer really, wasn't a switch that. But here's my lure rod with the thread in the end. So I'm gonna keep casting with that and whilst keeping an eye on the float rod. Okay guys, wind's turned really suddenly now. But it's supposed to be northwestly. But as you can see right in the distance the coast bends around a bit. So I might head down that way and see if I can find a bit of a sheltered place because it's head on in my face here and it's not good for float fishing. So yeah, I think I'll go pack up and have a move. Okay, I've just come round the corner to um, River Aiden now. Still a westerly wind blowing around here. Got the lifeboat station over here. But the water's semi-clear here. Not too much to chop. But I don't think it'll hold garfish. I know it does hold scooby bass, so I might just whack the lure rod out a few times. I haven't got my polarised glasses either, so I can't really see through the glare. But might have a few chucks. Okay guys, no fish here. Had about 15 casts. My little brain's going overdrive, trying to think of places where to fish. Uh, bait wise, got mackerel. But I haven't really got any sort of heavy duty gear to fish, just sort of came out light today. Um, another guy just turned up, it was told him to go fish shops at the rocks over there, he was trying to swim for bass. But I think what I'm going to do, I might cycle along the river, try and see if I can see any fish on the way. Bit of a monster tide today, it's only about a foot away from going over the bank here. I'd see it on a um, stormy day, well, even bigger tide. I think it's about 6'2, 6'3 today down Waving Way. It goes up to about 6'6, six, 6'7. Six, six, and you can see in the distance, literally only a foot away from the banks here. Got all these nice houses, as well as they're raised up for a reason. But still going to carry on cycling along so I can find a place to fish. Just found by some of the new sea defences in the shore. I'm here, just hoping I can see like a shell or anything. Just found any, any sign of life, but water's a bit murky, no life at all. I'll keep going on. I'm right down Lancing End of Wild Water now. Still quite a big swell up there. This westerly wind's killing me, cycling. In fact, so I'm fit. They can see the swell over there. It's just not practical at all for float fishing. But by my, because it wasn't forecast, I 
keep going on, see if any of the beaches where they bend round a bit give a bit more shelter. Speed of these kite surfers going. Flying by, must be going a good 30 miles per hour. Well, guys, today didn't really go to plan. Right down by Brooklyn's just here. It's a bit flatter here, but the water's just really murky. You can see it's just coming straight along here. So, yeah, today did not go to plan at all. Um, Definitely want to give it another go. I'd say I've got a feeling that things could work if I find the right conditions. But saying that, I'm going to end the video here today. So give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.